Departmental calendar because it is always an opportunity to celebrate what we are doing, to think and talk about our research, but perhaps most importantly, it's an opportunity to get our community of alumni and current students together. So first of all, just a little bit of housekeeping. Just kindly please remember to mute your microphones whilst other speakers are speaking. We will have a, um, a Q&A after each talk, so remember to use the raise your hand function if you want to ask any questions. If you want to make some noise on social media, thumbs up, please do tweet and share. Kindly include our BBK org site Twitter handle if anything particularly resonates. And do remember what Ola just said, we are recording today, so please turn your camera off if you'd rather not be seen. But of course, it is lovely for us to see some faces. So after each talk, time for Q&A. Um, I will moderate most of the Q&A uh, sessions myself, just in terms of expectations management. Sometimes there is a very, um, very lively discussion with our alumni. We may or may not be able to take turn between all of your questions, but we will do our very best. So. Now, um, I will take the floor and what I will do is give you an update on everything that has been happening on the staffing wise on education and also, of course, on our research. So some people um, are leaving us, have left us, but they're always very, very much remaining with us in spirit and really four very, very special colleagues who in very different ways we are indebted to and who will always be part of our OP DNA. So Julie Dickinson has now retired. She is still active in the department, however, seeing through the last few of her doctoral students. Julie was always a very special critical friend to us and we miss her greatly. In the top left hand corner, I think it's very typical of Anders, but I couldn't find a current photo on the web. So Anders has decided to concentrate on his own consultancy activities. Anders was with us for a um, relatively short number of years, but again, left a deep impression. I don't think anybody can write four star papers as quickly as he can. And he also brought with him a rather refreshing Danish directness which being honest, I still miss around. Chris Dubery, our resident um, agony uncle, is that the right word for all things stats related? Another very wonderful critical friend who was with Birkbeck for well over 20 years, um, was now taken retirement. And again, Chris, thank you so much for everything you've done for us over the years and we miss you. Susan, Susan Khan has been with us for a number of years um, and lately joined us as a part-time member of faculty. Uh, Susan will be leaving this post but will remain working with us on an associate capacity and again Susan has brought a very very warm spirit to our department has been hugely too important to us as a community so Susan please stay around don't go too far. Kate Mackenzie Davy, who, like Chris, was with the department for well over 20 years. Again, you know, left, left a mark on everything that we do. Really, she was somebody who rather selflessly always put other people first and very often did what was right rather than what was easy. So, Kate, again, we miss you very much. Talk about our new joiners. So, lovely smiling photographs, by the way. So, in the left hand corner, you will see our new colleague Lilith Wiley, who has joined us as a lecturer. Her, particularly, her particular expertise is in diversity, but also looking at marginalized groups. In the middle, 
Rushpal Densa Kalon, otherwise known as Rushi. Her expertise is on work and well-being and also understanding conflict at work. What a timely topic. In the right hand corner, Halle Pontus, whom of course you will hear speaking today. So Halle's particular field of expertise is behavioral addiction. And like Chris uh, before him, he's also an expert in quantitative methods. Monu join us. On the left hand side, our incoming colleague Lukas Wallrich, who will be formally joining us on the 19th of this month as a lecturer in the department, another expert on diversity, who is also really interested in, uh, in the role of social contact. In the middle, you will see Professor Julie Gore, who is joining us to lead our new professional doctorate in HRM. A little bit more about that later. We're absolutely delighted um, for Julie to join us because she brings very unique expertise in cognition and decision making. On the right hand side, probably a face familiar to um, very many of you. Absolutely delighted that Robrina has now joined us as a visiting professor in the department. Of course, Rob used to work with the department in a full time role. We are ever so pleased to have him back and he will indeed also be contributing to our new professional doctorate. We've had a whole number of successfully defended a PhD thesis. Um, Dr. Kirsty May Lauder, Dr. Helen Cooper, Dr. Sam Evans, Dr. Camelia Oanchea, Dr. Ian Hoare, and Dr. Chinedu Wabuka. Really, really proud of all of their successes. Actually, a number of them uh, passed their vivas without any corrections. And in any of you who know anything about academia, that does not happen very often and really goes to showcase not only the quality of their work, but dare I say, also the quality of the supervision the students received in the department. Our prize winning students. So one thing that we initiated this year was to have a greater range of prizes to really celebrate the success of our students across all of our programs. And let me just read out these fabulous successes. The best CIPD accredited program student, Catherine Stedman, the best dissertation in medical leadership, Lucy Martin, Best Management Consultancy and Organizational Change student, Aguro pa Padima. Best Overall student, Meredith Jones. Best Research Project, Aurelie Bernardoni. The Special Ellen Wingrove Award for the Most Outstanding Dissertation in Coaching, Mary Jordan. Honorable Mention for Best PhD Thesis in the Department, Helen Cooper and the Philip Powell Award for Best PhD Thesis in the School of BI, Samantha Evans. So really big round of applause to all of you. We are super, super proud of our students who've done so exceptionally well during what really was for everybody a really, really challenging and very different year. Some research and funding news. So just cherry picked a little bit here. There is much more going on behind the scenes, but I do hope that all of you will have had the opportunity also to catch up with our departmental newsletter. If you haven't yet, time to sign up, just get in touch with us. So some research and funding news. Um, you will, of course, be aware that we um, have our very lively qualitative research methods group. And I know quite a few of you have been asking. Yes, absolutely. There will be another methods in Action Day. So watch out. We're at the moment debating whether or not to have this this autumn indeed. We've got a new research center for neurodiversity research at work, which is led by myself and Dr. Nancy Doyle, who is a practitioner 
We've already had the first funding successes, some funded doctoral students. We will also be undertaking some research to look at the role of reasonable adjustments in education and are currently deep in the throes of analysing some preliminary data about how autism at work programmes are perceived by uh, by different stakeholders. So hopefully we will have our launch event sometime in early autumn because we would love to report back those findings by then. The second research centre, we're currently reshaping the Centre for Sustainable Working Life. You might have twigged listening to the cohort of our new joiners that really there is quite quite a momentum now behind our expertise in well-being and in diversity. So what we would like to do is bridge those two angles and bring them together under the banner of a research centre. Then some of the other funded projects that are going on at the moment, um, gendered marketing of children's toys and clothing. So Dr. Rebecca Whiting is looking at the ethical arguments in gendered toy marketing um, at the moment. Um, you will see Barbie there, of course, what colour is Barbie wearing? Pink, right? I'm also hugely proud and I dare say amused that I hope um, that we are the only um, REF submission, oh I should explain the jargon, REF stands for Research Excellent Fr Excellence Framework. It's one of these exercises that you have to undergo as an institution periodically where you have to submit your outputs and one of our outputs is could Barbie be an entrepreneur? So Helen Cooper, one of our uh, PhD candidates, and um, Katrina and Kate McKenzie Davids are authors on that. And yeah, I always find it um, lovely to think about that probably are the only ref submission where Barbie is being meant. But of course, Barbie in pink. Is it right that Barbie is pink? Is it right that Barbie looks like this? So these are some of the issues that uh, Rebecca is looking at. Um, with uh, my colleague David, we've uh, also recently been awarded funding from Police Now. Those of you who um, are interested in the policing landscape might know that policing training now has to take place at university level rather than pre-entry level. Police Now is a specific leadership programme which is modelled on Teach First similar kind of philosophy where you cherry pick really bright young graduates and then rather than in underperforming schools, you put them in neighbourhoods that might be particularly challenging and you hope for these bright young minds to really make a difference. So more to report back on that in two years time. We've also launched our Research Insights Program Birkbeck Connections. So many thanks to Joe and Joe and Rachel who are making that happen, where regularly we film some of the research that we are doing, and then our wonderful uh, film director Barnaby uh, makes them into super clips that go on YouTube. Well worth listening to. So um, keep an eye out for those and we will also make sure that we showcase these in our departmental newsletters. So some topical issues um, already managing remote working, the role of self-compassion, engagement and so on and so forth and many, many more to follow. Really, uh, this series came out of our commitment to bring our research into practice that has been another key aim for us over the last few years. So a bit about us as well and a moment for self-reflection. Um, like for all of you, right, our working lives have changed fundamentally. We had to make the move to digital education for better or worse. I guess we had a little bit of a head start because, of course, we were one of the first OP programs to be delivered as network learning. And we were glad that we had that expertise because last year when we went into lockdown, because we are a department that teaches across three terms, we had exactly two weeks 
to put all of our exams online. We did it. There were a lot of lessons learned. Um, we're not suffering from Zoom fatigue because our university thinks Zoom is a bit naughty, so it's teams, teams, teams for us. But talking to colleagues, talking to everybody, I think we are just all really, really hungry for human contact. But of course, we will do that safely when the time comes. We've had to acknowledge our own vulnerabilities. It has been tough for us to be teaching, to be working without seeing each other. Many of us have worked through illness and through loss. Fundamental events have happened around us, which really as a department have prompted us to take a stance on our values and in particular to think about decolonizing our curriculum. Because when you look at the history of IO psychology, mm, there are very, very many issues and topics where there is nothing to be proud of. If you think about the research on assessment and selection, which to this day shows that ability tests have adverse impact. Have you really found a solution to that yet? No, I don't think so. But these are really, really important things for us to speak about and to do something about too. So over the last year, become, we've become much more active, um, decolonizing our curriculum, creating a principled space in our classroom where everybody's voice matters. Um, I seem to have come out of slide you now. I think this might be because not everybody has um, had their microphones muted. Just bear with me again. But can you still see my slides? Can you just give me a yes? Uh, yes. Perfect. Thank you very much. So building the anti-racist classroom has been hugely important for us. We've also together written a guide about race and trauma, which we have distributed very freely. It's available um, via our website. And really, the events of uh, this week, the racism in football, um, you can see this mural here is Marcus Rashford. Somebody um, sprayed some racist graffiti on it, but you can also see the little messages of support that were plastered over it. Racism doesn't have a place in modern day society, and it certainly doesn't have a place in education. And that is really an issue that we have been feeling increasingly passionate about. So the context has not stopped us from innovating, though. We have broadened and deepened our portfolio. We now have our MSc in coaching psychology. Hugely many thanks to Susan, who has been spearheading that and leading it through accreditation. We've also recognized the need to offer continuous professional development beyond the MSc. So our existing professional doctorate in OP um, is a real success. We are absolutely overwhelmed with um, applications. And again, a huge big thank you to Joe and Rachel who have been leading it to dual accreditation by both the BPS and also the HCPC. We've got our new professional doctorate in HRM and evidence-based management, which will be starting next January. So if you're interested to learn more, please do contact me. At school level, we've got a new Center for Professional Development. Birkbeck has never really been a typical business school that has done as much as I don't like the term than executive education and professional education, but we have recognized that whilst remaining true to our well values and doing what is important to us, probably the time has come to be a little bit more courageous in this regard. So think about how you can get involved, contribute, make a difference. Here are some potential options. You might want to think about becoming a mentor at 
Birkbeck. We've got a range of different mentoring schemes and the response and the feedback from our students has been overwhelmingly positive. It's a real opportunity to make a difference to people's lives. Come back and work for us as a seminar leader. How about that? We had a number of alumni joining us over the last couple of years. And again, it has been such a success story because those who have been educated at Birkbeck really, really appreciate the way that we teach and also the critical spirit that we would like to imbue in our education. If you are a coaching graduate, so either from the graduate certificate or one of our MSCs, again, do stay in touch because we are looking to set up a referral scheme for coaches on a pay as you can afford basis, really to make sure that the broader community is supported through coaching. That one, brilliant, everybody. So that brings me to the end of my talk. Just a quick reminder on um, timing. So I'm just going to pop the um, timetable up for you here. So in a moment, it's my pleasure to be introducing Dr. Simon Weston, then at 2.15 very apt, uh, Dr. Susan Kahn on melancholia and loss, then we are going to be taking a break, really just to give all of us a chance to step away from the screen. And then at three promptly, we will be starting again. Holly will be leading us through his work on work addiction, followed by a session where we'll be showcasing a range of the wonderful research that is coming out of our professional doctorate, which then leaves a little bit of time for final remarks, some final questions. 4.30 the end, then a little breather, and I do that very, very many of you also can stay on for our Alec Roger um, lecture at the end of the day. So that brings me to the end of my talk. Let me just come out of a slide view so I can see if there are any questions for the department and then also introduce Simon. So any questions at all about what we've been up to? Thank you very much for the applause. Much appreciated. <laughs> Any questions, then please then use the virtual raise your hand faction, uh, function or type your question into the comments box. All good. Lovely. Oh, thank you, Nancy, for your positive comments. Um, it's been lovely working with you as well on the Neurodiversity Research Centre. I dare say um, it's a duo of strong and rather opinioned women <laughs> challenging each other to really make a difference to the world. And that's really, in a nutshell, what Birkbeck is all about. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Michelle, as well, for your kind comment and that we've done a good job for you students amidst a pandemic. You know, all of you really have been a key focus for us because I can't tell you, and I think I'm speaking on behalf of all colleagues, how much you matter to us as a community. Because, of course, education goes two ways, right? You need somebody you know, the side of the faculty delivering it, but also you need students who genuinely engage in their dialogue. And honestly, you've done us all proud this year. So thank you. Absolutely, Hallie, more research. So no pressure on you. <laughs> Lovely, okay.